Hi, hello there, welcome to the channel and a very special welcome and thank you to people who have newly subscribed to my channel. I know that both channels aren't for everyone, they're kind of niche content so I appreciate everyone who watches my videos and especially those who choose to subscribe for more of them. It's very nice of you, thank you. Um, today I thought we would take a look at Reddit slash relationship advice because it's been a while since we've been there. So let's get going. Uh, let's open this bad boy up, shall we? So my twin, <laughs> you know how I feel about this format. Okay, so OP is a 24 year old male saying that my girlfriend, who's a 23 year old female, just revealed to me that her sex life is usually the best with guys that she doesn't want to settle down with. So my girlfriend and I have been together for eight months. During the whole relationship, the sex has been less than stellar. Lately, we barely do it and the quality is not the best. She says she doesn't feel that urge to have sex with me and the connection is just not there. To be honest, I've never had this issue before. But we love each other and we believe that we can improve. All my past relationships, the sex was always good. But with her, we just lack that intimacy and the sex feels robotic. Mm. Um, today we were talking about it and trying to find ways to get better. I remembered that in the beginning of the relationship, she had told me that her past that her two past serious relationships, the relationship was essentially sexless. She didn't have sex for a year with one of them, so I asked her today if she thinks there's a pattern to it. Since the sex with me is also not the best, I asked her what she thinks happens in her relationships to make them like that. She said that she never has or never has had good sex with the guy she tends to settle with. The guy she doesn't want to settle with, her situations as she calls them, the sex with them was always good. That took me by surprise and made me feel that she is telling me that she's not particularly attracted to me sexually. She just sees me as the nice educated guy with a nice job that she wants to marry, but not the bad boy she craves sexually. Does that mean she is settling for bad sex because I'm the nice guy? Um, <laughs> I mean, straight away, just to answer that question, potentially, potentially, but it does seem to be that her tastes change so that the kind of person that she doesn't want to have um, a proper relationship with, or what was the the term that they used? Um, yeah, uh, guys that she is very sexually attracted to and has good sexual chemistry with that she doesn't actually want to settle down with them. It seems as if the kind of guy that she is looking to settle down with is maybe a bit different. Um, before we go into that a little bit deeper, let's just... Um, go through the post a little bit because there were a couple of things that OP said there. Um, so clearly they're both of the opinion that the sex isn't the best quality in the world. So I don't know if it's better or worse that it's a two-way street and it's not one-sided that one person is happy and thinks it's good um, or if it's, yeah, better or worse <laughs> that they both feel the same way. I mean, at least they're on the same page so no one is offended. You know, I think so maybe that is a good thing that they're both on the same page regarding the chemistry. They know the situation. No one is kidding themselves. Um, and OP has never had this issue before, but the girlfriend has. So that's interesting. It's good also that they've actually talked about it and that they believe they can improve. Um, communication is very important there. Um, we lack the intimacy. I mean, I would wonder why. Um, they also said the sex feels robotic. To be honest, as soon as I read that, I thought, well, robots use lube. So, <laughs> um, I mean, that's like, you know, a classic quick and easy way to spice things up, right? To um, try things that you've never tried before, to be open with the kind of things that you are curious about. And I think a big thing as well in these situations, especially when you're you know that a situation isn't good and you want to improve it and you feel like it's not just for your sake, it's also for the other person. You know, there can be a lot of pressure there, but you know, a lot of the times in general relationship situations, the, the pressure is what makes things worse. So although it's easier said than done, um, and OP hasn't mentioned anything about it to be fair, but I would, recommend, I would re definitely recommend just trying to stay as sort of relaxed about it as possible 
be willing to have a little bit of a laugh and a giggle about it. And if something doesn't, you know, go the right way, um, you know, just uh, talk about it and um, don't take it too seriously. You know, if someone um, tries something that you don't like, just, you know, oh, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't think I want to go there rather than being like, shit, what the fuck are you doing? Get away from me. Um, and equally, you know, if someone is suggesting something and not necessarily trying to do it yet, just suggesting it, you know, be, be open, um, but also respect your own boundaries, you know, don't do anything that you're not actually comfortable with, because again, that's just going to make the situation worse for everyone. Um, I'm very much of the belief that people who um, care about, you know, the sexual partner in any way will want them to be genuinely having a good time as well and not want them to do anything that they don't want to so I know there's definitely temptation to just go along with things to please the other person but that's in the end is is going to make for a worse situation and sort of degrade the trust a little bit um on both sides um yeah and and one of the past relations past serious relationships with the girlfriend they didn't have sex for a year um, so that's a long time. I would wonder as well, like, what her general sex drive is like, you know, when she's been with people sexually that she didn't want to be in a relationship with. Is that because she was in a phase where she wanted to have more sex but didn't want to do, like, wasn't in the mood for a relationship? You know, so I would I would wonder which direction this is going in. Or alternatively, um, it, as I say, it could be that she just has different taste in people and that maybe it's more of a mindset thing that in her mind, the kind of person that she wants to marry and sees as responsible and a father, maybe in her mind doesn't align with the kind of thing that she finds sexually attractive. So maybe that's something to explore. You could also do like some role play, you know, if you're not normally uh, the bad boy, um, as I think he calls it. Uh, yeah, not the bad boy, she feels sexually. You know, maybe do a little bit of role play, you know, do a little scenario that again you don't take too seriously. You just laugh and joke about, you know. Maybe you, maybe you pretend like you're actors in an adult movie, so you're both aware that it's very cheesy and corny and stuff like that. But you know, it's just you know for a laugh and whatever. Um, but to answer the question that OP actually poses, does that mean that she's settling for bad sex because I'm a nice guy? Um, well, firstly, I would wonder, are you settling? Um, I think a lot of the time people uh, who are in a relationship that they care about focus a lot about the other person and what they want but don't pay enough attention to themselves and what they want. Um, so I think that would be the first thing to figure out, like where do you stand in the situation? Do you feel like you're settling? Yes or no? Is she settling? I honestly, I don't think necessarily. I think, as I say, it's maybe, it could be a mindset thing that she could, you know, work on and realise that actually these two things, these two pictures of different types of men, they don't have to be at odds with one another. Someone can have, you know, different sides to them, different personalities, depending on the situation. Um, it could be that, as I say, she's normally not that fussed about sex anyway. Maybe it's actually not the most important aspect for her, or even one that's on the list of priorities, so it doesn't bother her that much at all. Um, it could be a number of things. Honestly, I would, I would ask her the question, which I think is most of the time the case in these relationship situations because you can't ever really know what the person is thinking. Even if you ask them, obviously they could, they could bend the truth or you could misinterpret something, but definitely the best way of trying to figure out what's going on with them is to ask them directly. But certainly I, I don't think it's necessarily the case. Um, and I think... There's a lot to be said for someone who is actually nice and not one of these people who claim to be nice <laughs> because I think most people who are nice don't need to go around telling people that they are. I don't think that's what OP is doing. I think they're just, you know, sort of trying to describe the situation. So not making an, any accusations there. Um, but yeah, I think it can definitely still go on a good path. So I, I'm not too worried about them. I think there's, there's still potential. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's see another one. Mm. Shit, this looks like it's going to be interesting. 
Oh, by the way, I watched back one of my other videos where I took a drink of water because, you know, I've been testing out this new webcam and stuff. The way I drink is so weird. Like, I kind of learned that recently because apparently, um, like, uh, because I've got issues with my jaws and also issues with my tongue and I don't know how to, like, swallow properly, apparently. Like, I have tongue thrust. What I notice as well is I do this, like, chipmunk thing where like I fill up my cheeks with water and then I swallow it and whenever I've seen someone else drink they don't do that so I think maybe that's something I also need to work on like I went to speech therapy like for the tongue thrust thing and to try and like do these exercises to strengthen my tongue and put it in the right position check out the main channel um for stuff on that is linked in the description down below but like the speech therapist never ever mentioned that but she did only ever get me to take sips of water. She never said just drink normally, so she probably didn't notice. Um, but yeah, anyway, not relevant, but yeah, I noticed that when I watched myself back because you don't usually watch yourself drink, right? So you don't usually know. Anyway, <clears throat> so OP is a 40-year-old male who says, my wife, who's a 38-year-old female, only actually likes two of her kids. So my wife and I have five kids, fuck, it's not even the majority. Uh, four boys and a girl who are all aged between six and 17. For simplicity, oh, I love that they give them names and they're also alphabetical. Um, I'll call them Adam, Brian, Carol, David and Eric, which I'm guessing is an order of seniority or uh, age. Um, last week I was talking to Adam about his senior plans and he said something that made me reevaluate everything. I said it was bittersweet to watch him go up because I'll miss him so much when he leaves. He said, you will, mum won't, very casually, ah okay, you will, mum won't, uh, very casually, like it's a known fact. I said, that's ridiculous. And he just said, okay, uh, kid's pretty chill. So I spent a week watching my wife, just quietly observing how she talks to her kids. And I realised that Adam is right. She doesn't like them. And she doesn't like Carol either. Adam and Carol are our two most social kids. They both have a lot of friends and do a lot of group activities. My wife and I have always been homebodies and we prefer to stay at home and read or enjoy a nice meal rather than to go out. I notice my wife continually makes comments about Adam and Carol, their friends and how they spend their time. Adam and Carol don't even respond, which makes me think that this has been going on for a while and I just never noticed. It's even worse with David. She just ignores him and he completely ignores her. How have you not noticed this? They don't talk at all. He spends all his free time in his room playing video games. I already knew he liked to spend a lot of time in his games, but he's always willing to talk to me about his games when I ask. Him and his mother though, radio silence. In contrast, my wife talks to Brian all day, takes great interest in everything he has to say and praises him constantly. Eric, while only six, she's always cuddling and telling him how great he is. I don't know how I never noticed this before. I don't even know how to talk to her about this. Is there any way to raise the topic that doesn't sound like an accusation? Too long didn't read. My wife is rude to two of her kids and ignores another one. I don't know how to talk to her about it. Oh my, that's really interesting. That's so interesting. It seems as well from what OP has said that like she's not even subtle about it and it's even to the point of like I imagine almost making digs about Adam and Carol because they're more social than she is and I guess like she's judging that somehow and not approving of their lifestyle <gasps> oh my goodness I mean yeah, judging from what OP said it seems like it probably has been going on for a while if Adam is to the point where he knows it, it's just a fact of his life now and like it doesn't even like phase him that much um, externally, superficially. But you have to wonder what effect that it has on the kids on the inside. Um, I don't even know if it's especially the younger ones or especially the older ones because you know the younger ones they're maybe like more sensitive and they don't understand what's going on, they haven't had as much time to get used to the situation or if it's worse for the older ones who by that time do have enough life experience to know what's going on and the fact that their own mother doesn't even like them. And kids of all ages tend to be very observant as well, like whether they consciously or explicitly know, oh my mum doesn't like me, they will for sure know that they 
know that they're treated differently. That's a shame. Oh my goodness. That is a shame. Um, the question that was specifically asked, is there any way to raise this topic that doesn't sound like an accusation? That's tricky. I think there is a way to raise it that doesn't sound like an accusation, but I think a lot of that depends on the recipient because you're saying, like, you're not saying, how do I talk to her about it in a way that is not accusatory? Factual, it's not accusatory. That's very different to doesn't sound like an accusation because then you're talking about how will the other person receive that? How will they apply their own perspective, biases, sensitivities, etc., to that question? So I honestly think that no matter what you say, there's potential for it to sound like an accusation. But the way that I would probably go in that situation to try and make it come across um, as neutrally and openly as possible is... I would have, I would start off the conversation a bit more casual, like obviously have it personally, maybe like, you know, when uh, the two of you are getting ready for bed and, you know, you're going to have like your nighttime chit chat before you go to sleep or something like that. I would maybe say, yeah, I was talking to Adam the other day just about, um, you know, him, you know, in his senior years and gosh, I guess he's going to be leaving the nest soon and yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm going to miss him. What about you? And see what she says. Because maybe she'll be like, well, I don't know. I think it's not really feeling that real for me yet. But maybe once he is out of the house, maybe it'll hit me then. Or maybe she'll be like, nah, whatever, I'm not too bothered. You know, there's there's different ways that she could respond to that. Um, and then obviously, depending on the response, I would maybe go, yeah, because I was talking to him about it. And actually, he said something that I was kind of confused about. Like, I don't know if you can help me out here or like tell me what you think, but... So I said to him, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss you when you're gone. And he said, you will, but mum won't. And I was just really surprised by that. Like, what, what, what do you think? Like, is, is, does something happen between you two lately that, you know, that I don't know about? Or what's going on there? And maybe she'll be like, oh my God, like, did he really say that? Is that what he thinks? And maybe then, you know, she's not even conscious of what she's doing. That could be very well be a thing or depending on how close you are and how much she's willing to be open about the situation maybe she'll be like mm, well he's not wrong you know and then again take it from there maybe if she's like oh my gosh I didn't realize then maybe say yeah like maybe I don't know just maybe uh pay attention to to like uh, I don't know how you interact with all the kids, you know, just because I, I, I know that we would both hate for them to think that, you know, that we have any favourites or something like that. So don't frame it in the way of that we don't like one of the kids or some of the kids. Assume that it's positive for all of them, but just some, you know, some interactions are more positive than others. And if she's like, mm, he's not wrong, then be like, really? Like, like, te te like, tell me about that. Like, I want to know what's what's going on. Like, has it always been this way? Or, like, what's what's the issue? You know, don't, um, don't instantly turn it negative, even if she admits to not liking some of the kids, at least as much as the others. Come from it as a place of curiosity and trying to understand the situation so that it's not like, I'm judging you. How can you possibly not like, you know, even one of her kids, you're a terrible mother. That is like bad territory, don't do that. Be willing and open to hearing her out and you know, hearing what she has to say about the situation while also balancing the needs and the health of the children. Um, that's what I would do in that situation. Again, just be careful because she she might not even know, she might not even be aware that she's treating the kids differently. Um, and it's obviously a sensitive situation, um, which I think OP knows. I think OP knows that, but... Yeah, it's a shame, and as I say, it could be affecting the kids more than they, uh, more than they let on, so to say. So, best of luck with that. That definitely sounds like a tricky situation, but good that you want to talk about it and not just ignore it. I think that's good. Cool. What is next? <clears throat> um. 
Ooh, this looks like it could be interesting. Good, sorry, I was just muting myself while I coughed there because like, because I don't edit these videos, I can't edit the coughs out, but I just found my mute button there, so. Okay, um, so OP is a 26 year old female this time and her boyfriend, who is a 30 year old male, wants me to admit that I cheated because I tested positive for an STD. So in 2019, I called my boyfriend of seven months, telling him to go get tested for chlamydia. So this was actually a while ago. I just received a call from the OBGYN after a routine checkup that I had it. I didn't think anything of it at the time because I stupidly didn't get tested before we started the relationship. I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, I didn't care which of us gave it to each other and thought to just get the medicine and be healthy after the week. Well, he goes to get tested and it's negative. A slew of problems begin, as, as one could imagine, such as brainstorming who gave it to me. Just weeks before, I went to an EDM festival with three girlfriends and he automatically believes that this is where I cheated on him. I didn't. In fact, I had a pretty lousy time. We break up for this issue about a year later. Oh my gosh, this is a, like a long-term issue. Um, as his trust issues never subsided, yeah, clearly. It always comes back to the mystery chlamydia and the belief that I'm lying. A few months ago, a few months go by, we rekindle things um, on his initiative, so he wanted to, he's the one that started that. It always goes well, and then he revisits the mystery STD and breaks things off. So from his perspective, he's like, if I can trust you again and go into this relationship again for the long haul, I need you to admit that you did it. Um, and a few months later, he tries to rekindle things, and then he has all these doubts and uh, that I got away with cheating. And this has been a cycle for four and a half years now. So my God, he's clearly not able to get over her and doesn't necessarily want to. He just wants her to admit what she did because he's convinced. I love him tremendously and thought we were over the 2019 drama because that was four fucking years ago. As we've had a loving relationship for the past one and a half years. I never cheated on him and I would have thought that he didn't get an STD that I had. I never would have thought he didn't get a, uh, yeah, an STD that I had as we were sexually active and I assume not using protection. Let's come back to that. He's given me an ultimatum to admit the truth or lose him forever. Do I lie to keep him around? Do I hold my integrity and lose him? Is there any scientific possibility that I never got this STD and it was a false positive? I'm a fucking mess. TLDR, on and off boyfriend of four and a half years wants me to admit I'm cheating on him, to admit to cheating on him and getting an STD from years ago. I didn't, I know, I don't know why he didn't test positive for this STD as we were sexually active. He's given me the ultimatum to confess or listen forever. I guess I have to lose him or lie. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's, let's, let's first address the thing of testing. So it's very good that wherever this person is, that um, routine sexual health tests are part of normal um, gynecological visits. That's very good. I personally, um, like when I was living in the UK, I always tried to get tested either every six months or every time I change partner. And whenever I met someone that I thought we had the potential to be physically intimate with, then I would always ask them to get tested as well because I've never had anything and I don't want to get something. Um, so that's something that I was very strict about. And I'm very pleased to report that absolutely no one has ever refused. So if that's something that you have either thought of doing or you now hearing it, think that's a good idea, but maybe other people won't want to, it's absolutely fine. And even some of them have said, I don't know why I haven't done it before. So that's one thing. But then on top of that, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, what I was going to say. So that's what I did in uh, the UK. I now live in Germany and they don't do free sexual health tests. You have to pay for them, um, which isn't cheap. And also they only give you them if you think that you're at risk of having an STD. So only if you slept with someone who has an STD or if you've like had sex with a sex worker or something like that, they won't give it to you. 
or like otherwise, which is total bullshit. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so we don't know when I change partner and maybe sometimes I have to bend the truth a little bit, which is absolutely ridiculous, like to take care of your own health and take responsible precautions to protect yourself and other people. They don't want you to do that. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, good practice is every six months or every time you change partner. Anyway, um, and so then to not get tested, which to be fair, most people don't do, and I'm not trying to judge anyone. However, to get tested and then not use protection like a condom, which is not a hundred percent, nothing is a hundred percent. And that goes for the STD test as well. So it is possible although slim it is always possible that the test result was wrong it's also possible that his test result was wrong keep that in mind nothing is 100% um but I think you know a lot of people won't ever get tested and they also won't ever use protection which I think is silly and a lot of people also only think about pregnancy so they say oh well I'm on the pill anyway or well I asked and she's on the pill anyway that also is not 100% and it doesn't do anything to protect you against STD so please <clears throat> Be sexually and socially responsible, get tested, use protection, okay? Um, <laughs> I remember when I was in uni, people used to call me the sexual health Pokemon because I would like, I would um, either uh, buy condoms or I would um, like pick up some free ones like when I was getting um, tested and I would bring them to me when I went out and whenever someone like looked as if they were gonna like hook up with someone, go home with someone, I would give them um, a condom <laughs> and I would always say like use condoms it's permicidal loop <laughs> and it was just it was just a thing and also like I've like you know it was so much a thing for me like I encouraged like my friends to get tested and stuff and one of my friends who had never ever been tested before but like I was so passionate about it that he went and got tested and he ended up having something and now he follows my guidance and gets tested every six months or every time he changes his partner I'm very pleased about that. Anyway, um, so yes, to answer the question, it is always possible that there was a false positive. I also think it's strange um, that given the situation that he never contracted the STD, especially when, based on what she said, she's almost certain that she had it before they got together. Because it could be possible as well that it was just between the last time that she, they had sex together and when she got tested that then she contracted it somehow. <sighs> There's disagreement about whether you can contract STDs without having um, sexual contact. I... I'm not a doctor or scientist of any kind, but as I say, there's disagreement about it. And I would guess that again, it's it's probably somehow technically possible, although extremely unlikely. Um, it could also be the case that for whatever reason, he has some sort of immunity to it, or he's just been extremely lucky and never got it. Um, the same way as, you know, some people had a natural immunity to COVID and they just never contracted it. You know, that's, that's a possibility as well, technically. Um, do I lie to keep him around? I'm like, especially in relationships, as I say, like I might sometimes bend the truth to the doctor to be able to pay, you know, to have the privilege to pay for a health test, which I think is just a, um, a responsible safety precaution. Um, when, when it comes to relationships, I really don't believe in lying. It just goes completely against a lot of the, the morals and principles that I have. Even when it's like to make someone feel better, like, oh, do you like my haircut? I always try and be tactful, but I'll never lie um, and just say yes, even when I think that it's not nice. Um, so me personally, I would say don't lie to keep him around. I understand his position. He's like, I love you, I want to be with you, clearly I can't stay away from you, but if you're going to hold on to this lie, how can I ever trust you? Because he's convinced. I understand his position, but at the same time, I think he's... I think there must be a reason, whether it's to do with her or something that's completely not to do with her. I think he must already have some sort of underlying trust issues that he's not willing to consider all of these possibilities that the test was wrong, her test was wrong, his test was wrong. Um, he has some sort of immunity for whatever reason. He doesn't seem 
um, willing to consider the slim but real possibility um, that she is telling the truth. He just seems to be convinced. Um, and honestly, like, what other situations are going to come up in the future where she is telling the truth and he's convinced that she's not, you know? I honestly, I wouldn't lie. Um, I wouldn't necessarily judge her if she decided to, but that would eat away at me. And I would be like, you know, <laughs> I know I told you the truth, but obviously I was, before I was concerned about your concerns and really worried about what that would do to the relationship. But now I can't stop thinking about it because now I've lied to you because it seems so much that you only wanted to hear one answer and I wanted to be with you, make you happy. So I gave you that answer, but that was a lie. And now that's what you can weigh at me. Do you know what I mean? So I think someone is going to have to make a compromise. Honestly, he's going to have to learn to actually trust you or you're going to have to learn to live with going from telling the truth to telling a lie. And it sucks. And I think if both of you are not willing to compromise, and I think that he is the one who should change his view, honestly, based on what OP has said, assuming that OP is, is telling the truth, I think he should be more open and willing and like think about everything else that's happened in the relationship. Has she ever given him any other reason to doubt, you know? And if he can't trust her, honestly, that that unfortunately is his issue as much as I understand where he's coming from at some point you have you have to revert to faith you have to say yeah the statistics say that you're lying but actually I do believe you because you've never lied to me before and I don't think that you would ever cheat on you that you would ever cheat on me I've never suspected you of cheating on me so based on that okay you know and it's been four years it's been four years, so I think there comes a time where for your own health you have to move past things um, and, you know, think about more what's been demonstrated in, in recent times. And I can, again, I can understand that if someone, if you convince someone did something and they still won't admit to it, then that does seem like, okay, maybe the event happened before but you're still, in my eyes, lying about it now. I can understand that, but... I don't... I, I'm not sure that this is going to work out because after this amount of time, if he still can't come around, I'm not sure that he ever will. And I suspect that since he's all the, always the one who keeps coming back, I think OP is maybe even possibly the one that's going to have to draw a line and say, actually, I have not been lying to you about this. And either you learn to trust me or I'm not going to do this anymore, you know? Um, and it shouldn't be in a threatening way, like, oh, well, you know, whatever, like, retaliatory, retaliatory. It shouldn't be that way. It should be like, I haven't lied to you before and I'm not going to start now, <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation, I think. It's a tough situation, but I really don't think you should lie. Those were quite good ones, weren't they? We only did three today, but they were ones where we could get into the meat of them. I quite enjoyed that. Um, I hope you did too. And I like that it's not, because because it's relationship advice, it's not just about dating. You know, there's um, some family dynamics in there too. I enjoy that. I hope that you did as well. Um, uh, if you liked it, found it interesting, want to see some of the other stuff that I've done and why people subscribe to me, then you can check out these other videos that I have. As I say, a link to the second or a link to the other channel, which is actually, this is the second channel, <laughs> the other channel that I have, the link is always in the description down below, so check that out too if you want to. Thank you so much for joining me, I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you next time, or in one of these videos. <laughs> Bye!